have it be due uh, Sunday night at 12. Sunday night at 12. Yeah. What's today? Thursday, Tuesday? Tuesday night at 12. You oh. like your damn man. No, next Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that equation and tell me the center point and the radius of that problem.
Let me see when you first when you get it, see what you get. Y'all look at it, you know, it's not, not, not what you're supposed to get. It. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, uh, somebody sort of help me guide me where, where you went astray, I guess. What do you have to do to fix this problem where you would know, just looking at it, where the center point is and what the radius is? You have to put it in standard form. You have to put it in standard form. How do you put this in standard form? Subtract four. That is simple, simple, simple algebra. Anybody, I'll see that. You just have to complete the square twice. Mm -hmm. yes. Why can't you just group and factor those things? Why can't you group them and factor them? That won't help you. That won't that won't help you. You can't go with, you can't factor that. You can only take this problem and rebuild it to this. You can only put it from that form into standard. This is a general form here, where it equals to zero. That's called general form. And then this is called what? 
what it just, that's the only place you can put it is standard form. And once it's in standard form, you can just look at it and tell it's what the center point and the radius. How do you know it's the circle? Because the x squared and the y squared. Because <coughs> the x squared and y squared are sitting there. That gives it away. How do you know? How do you know? If that's a circle, what about an ellipse? That's an ellipse, everybody. And the way you can tell if this is an ellipse that goes this way, this will be bigger than this. If this one is bigger than this, then it's an ellipse that goes like this. Just some stuff you get to die. Any questions about this problem now? No questions. Okay, we've, we've covered every single thing that would be all that, that uh, first test, okay? We've gone over every question just about could be over it. So, uh, as you can see that what's old subliminal chapter is also stuff that you'll be studying later on, such as the last part of that was about linear equations, okay? And how, how do you know when an equation is linear? How do you know if an equation is linear? Always an exponent in every variable. Well, the exponent's one. Right. The exponent is a one in both variables. In the two variables, the exponent is always one. Now, we've seen several times. Do you remember when we did the two equations? And you were a easily showed how to determine if they're what? Parallel? Well, what that mean? Both of them are just what? Linear equations. So, if you're given a linear equation, then it's really simple, simple, simple stuff to do what? To graph it. And you may be given that linear equation in several different ways. I mean, you could be. Uh, it could be uh, they could possibly give it to you in every sort of shape or form or whatever. 
But if they if they give you one, that's what's in what they call general form, that it will be written like this. Everybody see that? That's a linear equation in general form. Okay. Now, a couple of things I want you to notice about it, and that is the x term always comes first. Always comes first. And it it's always positive. Don't care about the rest of them. Y term comes next. I don't care if it's positive or negative. That the number stuck over the end is equal to zero. <coughs> now that's that's the general form of that linear equation. We know it's linear because why? Every single variable has the power of what? Now, what other forms are there for you to put this thing in? Let me tell you, and I'll give you an example later, but there's going to be a day coming in which the equation must be in this form for you to do what they ask you to do with it, okay? They could give you a particular question about a linear equation, and the first thing you must do is you must put it in general form, or you better hope that it's already in what? General form. But there's a particular reason that you have to have it in general form to do what they ask you to do. And I'll give you an example of this as we go through these things, okay? The second form is what they refer to as standard form, and it is just like this. That's called standard form. Notice again that the what? Notice again that what? That the x term comes first, and the y is next, and then the number is just placed on the right hand side. <coughs> that particular form is also very, very useful for certain problems. So there'll be days in which you'll have to put it in what? What they call the standard form to work the problem. The third form, who knows what the third form is? It's called the slope intercept form. And that's just what you do what? You actually just solve this equation for y. That is called the what? The slope intercept form. Now that's the form, that's the form that you will need if somebody wants to know what does this equation look like. Looking at this problem right here, you have no way of knowing what the problem looks like. You just don't know that just by looking at this thing. But if I looked at the one, if I looked at the one over there, I know it's what? <coughs> That problem looks just like that. <coughs> just that simple. So it only takes you seconds to graph one once you get it in one. What they call the slope intercept form. Simply because how do I know that the, the line is slanted this direction? It's all because of this. How do I know that it goes right through there? That point is called what? Whatever number that is on the end is going to be the intercept, the y-intercept. So learning to graph a linear equation should take you, what, just minutes to learn to do. You don't need a board over here like this that's expensive as could be to learn to graph linear equations. I mean, not when you have what? 
Not when you have a method that you know this is it. You also have what? A computer program that will graph this thing for you precisely. In a matter of blink of an eye, it's graphed. So you don't need to teach and waste somebody's time showing them how to go over to up five and go over to Gee, that's it's just not not feasible as far as I'm concerned. There's much more to learn about those. Some important things about linear equations that would be pretty interesting to know. And that is, is this is that a linear equation? Is that linear? Yes. Yes. And if, the, if it's yes, why? Why and how do you know it's linear? The two variables have an exponent of one. Both of them have an exponent of what? <coughs> Is that a linear equation? Yes. So, <clears throat> did you do you remember what they are? What <coughs> each one of those equations represent? Converting temperature. It's what? The top one converts what for you? It converts Celsius to Fahrenheit. The bottom one does what? Converts Fahrenheit to Celsius. So, how, how much do you all know about the Fahrenheit and Celsius scale? Isn't it minus 22 degrees for Celsius? It is what? It is when it is zero Celsius, it is 32 Fahrenheit. That's the what? That's the freezing point, right? And 100 boiling. What about the boiling point? 100. 100 Celsius. 100 Celsius? 212. 212 is the Fahrenheit. These are some things that you need to know. Just for the fact that what? Looking at those equations and knowing what you know about them, will they ever be equal to each other? No. Will the Fahrenheit ever equal to Celsius? Yes. Um, Catch that phone, because I... The, the answer to that question should be just like that. that. There's got to be a point in which both of them are what? The same. The same. Why is that? You just look at the two equations. What is this? Hey, y'all, look at the two equations, okay? Look at the two equations and look at the slope of the top one. What is the slope of the top equation? 9 over 5. 9 over 5 or 9 fifths. What is the slope of the bottom one? Are they the same? No. No, they don't, they don't look like the same number to me. So if the slopes are different, that clearly says what? That those two lines are not parallel. They are not parallel. So two lines that are not parallel has to do what? Somewhere. They have to cross somewhere. <coughs> you may not want to accept this, but you can prove this. The two parallel lines do, in fact, cross each other. 
And that's a hard concept to grasp, I know. But that is not, that is in time and space that two parallel lines do in fact cross. We can prove it mathematically. <clears throat> we can never think of them as crossing, right? You ever looked down a set of railroad tracks? What does the railroad tracks do? Mm -hmm. That's all the oh, uh, Does it look like they do this? Do they ever cross? Yeah. No. Not in the real world, they don't. But in time and space, two, two lines, two parallel lines, can be shown that they do in fact cross. Because of warping of time and space. <laughs> time and space is warped, by the way, folks. I, I, I'm sure you know this. I mean, it is warped, so you keep in mind what you think is going on. May not be what's going on. How can you possibly, possibly say what's going on is what's going on when your reference point is where? If you looked at this, if you looked at the electromagnetic spectrum somewhere on this end, you got what? Radio TV waves, right? Radio TV waves. You got up here, you got what? The infrared waves. And up above here, you got what? The X waves, beta rays, gamma rays. So this is all the electromagnetic spectrum. Right here in the middle. 10 to the minus 3 centimeters wide is something called what? Visible spectrum. Visible light. So you're basing your entire existence on 10 to the minus 3 centimeter bandwidth. Because what you see is all you see. But all this other stuff's going on around you. You think those radio waves and TV waves are coming in through this building? All you need is a pair of eyes called a television. And guess what? Turn it on and you get a what? You get a picture, right? You get sound. So yes, they're coming through here. Just as a lot as the X-rays, beta rays, and gamma rays are coming right through this room, you can't see them. <coughs> so going back to these slides. If we know for a fact that they cross, what does that mean? That means if we had a thermometer in each hand, at some temperature, they're both going to read what? Exactly the same. Where will that be? Where will that be? What you got? Better click that off. I'm going to walk up here one day and I'm going to unplug every damn one of these. Okay. <laughs> Anybody know where they cross? You do what's called algebra, right? You just say, what is F equal to C? Solve that. Solve that for C. That's a very simple, simple, simple 
algebra problem. Solve that equation for C. Okay, what'd you get? It shouldn't take you long, that long to do that simple of a problem. That is, that is too simple of a problem. Is it 2 equals plus 32? Negative 40? Yeah, off the phone, you start with a pencil and a piece of paper. What'd you get? <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> I guarantee you it's what it is. It's, so you get rid of the fractions just by doing this. The problem is so simple that it, it, uh -huh. it solves itself. It absolutely solves itself. Kitty! Well, you go on there and messing with all this other stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go to Atlanta, too, going over to get, get, catch the flight to California. Yeah? I just go from California. That's what I do. I just didn't pick the problem. I told you to open up. Everybody see how you do that? What? What, I do, what you always want to do is do what? Get rid of the fractions. Always. You can always get rid of fractions. All you can do is divide by the... Divide by five. Divide by five. Does that make sense? Multiply the whole thing by five. What? Multiply the whole... The whole equation right. by five. Hell, I've already done that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did. I multiplied everybody by five. Then I got what? I got this. Then I moved this over and got this. And I got this and this. It says three steps. And it's solved. <laughs> so that's why you need to know about linear equations. I mean, some people don't know that these two temperatures are the same at minus 40 degrees. They have to be because why? Right there is minus 40. Minus 40. That's what they sort of look like. That makes sense? And the, and the reason why is because, look, everybody, that thought the same as that. That number, they're two different numbers. And so if the slopes are different, that means what? That they're not parallel.
is this. Is that linear? Yeah. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Yes. Yes. It is clearly not linear. It is clearly not linear. Why is it not linear? Because you just told me a minute ago to be linear, all the variables have to have a power of one. This is why. Why is it not linear? Because what does this function look like? Does that look like a straight line? <coughs> No, no, no. That is not a straight line. So this is why this is not a linear equation. Clearly. Everybody see that? I ask you a second question. What is the domain of that problem? What is the domain of that problem? Write that in set notation. It would be what? The domain is a set of all x such that x is an element of the reals. Therefore, x cannot be what? Zero. That's written in set notation. That's just a fancy way of saying what? You're allowed to use all the numbers in the world except zero. Uh, so what does that make the Y line as? What is what is the Y line in that problem? What is the Y line in that problem? What is the Y in that problem? Where is it? What? I don't understand the question. The y line is what? This is y, by the way. Go ahead. This is called the y. In this problem, it is a vertical asymptote line. Vertical asymptote line. You don't ever get the crossing. Let me ask you a second question about this problem. What and is there a horizontal asymptote line? Is there a horizontal asymptote line no. in that problem? Yes or no? Of course. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Look at the X line. Look at this X line, everybody. This line does what? Never touches it. Never touches it. Just to get what? Extremely close to it. So that makes that X line something called what? A horizontal asymptote line. Can you ever cross a horizontal asymptote line? We know you can't cross a vertical asymptote line ever. Can you cross a horizontal asymptote line? Yeah, there's 
there is a possibility that some problems may do this because the, let's suppose that this was like what or four or whatever, I don't care. You could have a function that did something like this. Everybody see that? What is this thing? What is it doing? It's approaching what? Four. Four. Well, look how it approached it. It went up and down, up and down like this until it did what? It very well could do that. So you can have functions that do what? Cross the horizontal axis of line, but you will never find one that does what? Crosses the line, the vertical axis of line. they're going to ask you about functions and this for example like that. Look at that. <coughs> okay. They may ask you a question about is, you know, let's make this into some function Right now, we have it written as like an equation, right? So all, all that really means is, let's <coughs> change this value of y and make it look like this. That says that y is now a function of x. And <coughs> all that means is what? Look at the variables over here. There's only what? The x variable over here. So that means that y is a function of x. <clears throat> now, pretty soon they're going to ask you questions about that may give you some line and say, is that a function? And the answer is clearly yes, because if you had one that looked like this, That's clearly not a function. And how can I tell that immediately? Because if I can draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph, and I only cross my line one time, then it's a function. This one, notice again. Did I cross it more than once? Yes, I did. Is this a function? No. Is this a function? Yes. That makes sense, everybody. They'll ask you questions like that. You know, is this a function? And you'll have to answer yes or no. And you can just look at the, quote, the picture and see if it's a function or not. It has to be a smooth line that is a continuous line that you can actually travel or traverse without ever picking up your pencil, okay? Without ever, pick, ever picking up your pencil. for example, you could have what? You could have the, the, we normally call this the x axis, right? 
is the y-axis. You don't have to do that. You can, as long as you identify what you're calling this axis and this axis. Just remember that, that the horizontal axis, the horizontal axis is always, always, always the independent variable. And the y-axis is always going to be what? The dependent variable. Now, if you were graphing someone's, say, a child's temperature, then you would probably put time of this axis because why? His temperature his temperature is probably going to be what? Related to what? When you take it. What time? But what time did you take it? This is this time will be what? An independent variable. And this one will be dependent on what time you took his temperature. It may do what? It may start at 98. It may go up. And then it may drop back down or something, you know, like this. So... Or it may, you know, you may have it do what? It may go uh, up. Just according to how you graph this thing, if you don't want it in a smooth line, it may be here, temperature right here. This went down a little bit, went back up here, went back down, and then it's back down to like normal here. So it, it what? It could be like that. That could be what? That could also be a graph of of uh, some, some person's temperature. And the time being what? The independent variable and the temperature being the dependent variable. It's time to go, so. At least it is for me. I'm quitting.